We have the Blacktastic, Covert Muffin, and Emre, some of my favorite people in the world. But last but not least, we have, give it up with me, everybody, Kizarok! Woo! Take it away. Hi, hi, hello, hello. I am Kizaron. Um, I, you, I don't know how you keep doing it, Mello, but you just keep doing it. Uh, I don't think I have to introduce anyone because Mello did it for me. Uh, we got Emre over here. We got Blacktastic over here. We got Covert Muffin over here. Uh, it is literally in order of most experience of game to least experience. <laughs> so we have someone who's helped me route this. We have someone who saw a run yesterday and Covert. I, I just watched his stream. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is Ender Lilies. Um, I'm going to take a quick second to explain a couple things before I start. One, we start as soon as I load this file up. Two, um, Y'all know me as a Pokemon runner. This is a Metroidvania. Some of you might be confused. It's Emre's fault. Our first date, she actually helped me get a key for this game, and now I'm playing it here. So it's like a, a cute little thing. Um, I'm super Aww. excited to show it off. Um, who all's ready in the crowd? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I we believe he said, who in the crowd is ready for Ender Lilies? There we go. That's all more right. like it. All right, we're going to start in three, two, one. Go. Good luck, good, good luck. luck. All right, so right off the bat, you're seeing silly movement tech here. So when you dive, you belly flop. If you dive <laughs> twice at the same time almost, you do a double belly flop. That is, that is all the tech that I can tell you right now because we have no abilities because it's a Metroidvania. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's worth noting that the dive actually gives you iframes. It's kind of like the Dark Souls dodge roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of this early game is going to be a lot about optimizing movement and also reducing the recovery of movement, such as like those dives. You are actually going to be seeing him clip onto these ledges by uh, oh, wow. doing that little blip right there. He's actually doing a heal, the healing, which is kind of like, you know, more like Dark Souls. Um, but that will actually help him to, you know, cool down really quick uh, in these first couple of segments here. And something to note as well, if you look at the bottom left, um, that's our uh, that's our spirit inventory, which spirits are what we use to fight. Uh, Lily doesn't actually fight. Lily's also not her name, but we're gonna call her Lily anyway. <laughs> and um, if you notice, every time I hit the ground, you see it shuffle a little bit. That also reduces the cooldown. Um, it's a little less noticeable with what I'm doing right now, but when I get in combat soon, it's a lot more noticeable. Mm -hmm. Okay, I waited until you're past that enemy, but <laughs> don't worry about his health too much. All of the damage he takes here is calculated. I used to actually do uh, some damage boosts early that uh, saved a tiny bit of time, but your health would get really low, and if something went horribly awry, uh, you would die, and I, I, I don't want to die, so... Dying is slow. It is very slow. Okay, every now and again, you'll see me do like a single jump with a dive like that. It's not too much slower than doing these double flops, but um, there's some cases where you don't really have the space to do a double flop. Yeah. And there's also just some cases where like the timing of it works better, like dodging that enemy, doing the two jumps instead of the doubles. Right. Good. Um, also, there's actually less room for error with the single jumps. If you mess up one of these double flops, like that right there, which I swear was calculated, um, <laughs> you lose a little bit of time. All right, this is the first boss. I'm going to be a little quiet here because I'm in a little bit of focus mode. All right, beautiful. Nice, okay. So if you notice, there's two bars uh, above the boss. There's a red one and there's a yellow one, which will be purple with other bosses. Like right now it's purple. Um, so the top is health, which you also see in the bottom right of the screen. And the bottom is actually a stun meter. So what I did in that first phase was I spaced out my attacks in a way to where I stopped her from getting completely stunned. That was an excellent fight. That was a good fight. Actually, fantastic fight. Flawless fight. There, there, were, there was a bit of layers to the positioning of the end of that boss fight. He's uh, right at the edge of the screen where he wants mm. to progress at, so we'll spend less time traveling throughout the screen. Also, throughout the boss fight, you might have seen a little bit of a... a and again, uh, keep it in line with the animation canceling. Swapping between the uh, spirit loadouts so that your three-hit combo will recover a little bit faster and you squeeze in that much more DPS. Interesting. Now I have double jump, so now my fastest movement is a double dolphin. Look at me, I'm free willy. This is, this is actually, no joke, the fastest movement. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're, we're, we're keeping with the sea theme, yeah. dropping on the deck, flopping yeah. like a fish, you know? Hey, this is a PG 
did you stream? I'm on a <laughs> no boat dolphin camp. noises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said number 11. <laughs> That's like my favorite SpongeBob episode. Because <laughs> Mr. Krabs takes so long to explain, like, don't say those words, and he hits a pebble, and he just says, like, all five billion. <laughs> <laughs> Who lives in a pineapple? Ender lilies. <laughs> Ender. Yeah. So uh, we did miss a tutorial right there. It doesn't really matter, but um, so there's that white flower that I just hit. There's also red variants of the flowers. Um, they give you health and spirit count respectively. You don't see my spirit count right now because I still only have Umbral, which is the sword, but I am fighting my second boss here and my first uh, optional boss, um, which gives me an opportunity to explain what category I'm doing here. So this is called All Spirits. Um, as mentioned before, every single attack is a spirit. We have main mm. spirits, which are red, like the sword I have, and we have sub-spirits, <coughs> which are yellow, which is going to be this and Sigrid, even though Sigrid was a boss. Mm. and. We're just getting all, I believe it's 25. Uh, last I checked, I know how to count, but sometimes I don't. Uh, it should be 25 total bosses and then the final <laughs> boss. Right here is going to be like our first big amount of menuing here. So um, I'll, I'll let you explain this one, Emre. Um, what, wait, what am I explaining? Uh, the benches. Oh, right. So whenever you enter a room with a bench in it, um, the warp point is automatically unlocked. And that's basically going to be our fast travel yeah, so those, those are kind of like our hubs for everything. So it allows me to add spirits, um, swap spirits, upgrade spirits with the in-game currency known as Blight. There's Standard Blight and there's a Furious Blight. Standard is for the yellow sub-spirits and Furious is for the main spirits. Um, you might be noticing now that I'm also spamming um, attacks before I hit the ground. That's just another animation cancel sync, but that is now our fastest form of movement. I've never seen him move forward like that before. There's your never seen him before. <laughs> Hopefully that's it. Why? Why is he doing <laughs> Yeah, there, there are some points in this game where damage boosting will help you, especially when it comes to progression, but also getting knocked back into like a chasm like that will just like lose considerable amounts of time. Mm -hmm. like, like Much like the Metroidvanias and Castlevanias, you're kind of like in, in, unable to move until you, uh, you know, recover on the ground again. So to kind of reference what Emery was talking about earlier, so there is a bench here. They're technically called respites, respites, however you want to pronounce it. Um, but uh, we're just going to call them benches because <laughs> uh, it's a couple of Hollow Knight nerds that play this game. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't sit on that bench, but because I entered the room, it's unlocked. I will be fast traveling here later, but not right now. There's actually a sub-spirit that I could fight, but uh, we're going to wait until we're stronger. Not because that sub-spirit is necessarily hard to fight right now, mm. but uh, our movement is not very good. We will get a bunch of different movement tools eventually, because as mentioned about 37,000 times by now, this is a Metroidvania. Mm -hmm. So the way that the game works is it works on like a chapter system. So like every main boss that you fight, uh, they go up in chapter. And whenever you beat an area, like the final boss of an area, all of the enemies in that area are locked to that chapter. So once he beats the final boss of this area, that boss is going to be locked at a lower chapter and we'll be able to just obliterate him later. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to grab a little bit of spare health here. It's not really 100% needed for the safety route that I'm taking for the marathon today. But uh, I was going down an elevator and you lose like at most half a second grabbing that. So you <laughs> might as well grab it. Um, there's amulet fragments for five health, and there's amulet gems for 20. I did not hit you with Sigrid. That's awkward. All right, one extra attack needed, but uh, otherwise standard fight. This is Floral. Floral is probably the best sub-spirit in the game. <laughs> she, uh, she doesn't do a lot of damage, but we did mention stunning earlier, and stunning is going to be really, really really huge for a lot of the bosses. And she has the best stun rate out of all the spirits we're going to use. <laughs> now, as you see, when I did return the respite, um, we ended up in the last bench that we sat at. So that's why I was avoiding all those other benches. We are now taking the upper path. Uh, we were given two choices. We were lower path, which was the forest, and the upper path, which is a village. Um, we wanted floral. We pretty much just went down there to get floral first. 
And then going off of what Emre was saying about the chapter system, the main boss of this area is a huge, huge, huge HP sponge. Mm -hmm. Okay, first try, nice. Uh, that's a like tight little jump. Um, I don't think it's necessarily pixel perfect, but I just I kind of flub and say that it is. Okay, so you all saw that impressive. bird, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, this game has fall damage for enemies, but not for you, which is go and, and that includes bosses. So that's actually going to be huge, and we're going to get to see that in the next boss fight. Sometimes it just doesn't want me to go down the ledge there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kind of further expand on the sort of like drop damage that Emery was like referencing. Um, you can do it to all enemies, and there is a sort of cap for the major bosses. However, like the minor bosses and like elites, um, they can take a considerably more amount of damage uh, if you get them at the apex of their height of their jump or their special move. Like it is absolutely incredible to behold. I'm going to try and go for a really fast kill about halfway through the run on an archer called Fallen Archer. Uh, if I get it, then you just see his health disappear. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bird all over again. Uh, that poor bird. Yeah, we always just kill that bird for fun because yeah. he's yeah. just there. And <laughs> There's no it. reason to do it. I just. <laughs> it's a Metroidvania. Birds are jerks. They yeah. really are. Birds and frogs. <laughs> we can all agree this, that this we hate true. Metroidvania frogs, right? Mm, frogs yes. are terrible. <laughs> See, before I started playing this game, like I would just kind of laugh and be like, oh yeah, you, you all know what you're talking about with the game. I'm sure they're terrible. And now that I've played a handful of them, I'm like, ah, oh, birds are jerks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Corvimix. <laughs> and dangers. Oh god, I have so many friends that love birds. <laughs> oh, no. We love you, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay, it's your secret is safe with us. Okay, okay, no, no one heard that. No one's seeing this <laughs> no, right now. No, not tens of thousands of people live. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. So uh, we don't have swim right now, so what I was doing right there was at the very bottom of my jump, I would jump again to like reduce the amount of time that I was in the water. Mm. Oh, I might have gotten a juggle. I might have gotten a juggle. Okay, that's huge. So he's annoying the kill. Getting that juggle, he doesn't wow. get a single attack off. That was the fastest that fight could have gone. Basically, he, didn't, he doesn't really get a reaction until he hit that mm -hmm. ground from the juggle. So that was like absolutely perfect. Really mm -hmm. good placement for progression. And again, spending that least amount of time on that screen before heading on forward. Yep, yep. And we are one room away from another bench. Um, as you can see, my spirit counts low. Uh, you might have noticed that I'm breaking some barrels every now and again, some barrels and boxes. They have a small chance of dropping tiny bits of health and tiny bits of spirit replenishment. But regardless, since we're about to fight our first real major boss, I'm going to mm. take this bench. We're going to put on Headless, who we just defeated. He's basically a counterattack. Um, he's on more for a niche strategy against this boss, but this is Garrett. <laughs> this is where I see a lot of casual players just realize that this is a Souls-like game. <laughs> the boss is spongy. The boss is very hard. But uh, I got him figured out. Like even the music is epic. Like, like I feel like it's the music that ties like the Souls-like experience in video games like completely together. There he goes. There you go. Good drop. And that's our first big drop. Yeah, if you notice, like I was waiting and waiting and waiting to get that attack off. Um, most of the time, it is faster to wait like that and take that fall damage off of him. I'm gonna go for a kind of risky fall here. Okay, we got it. Cool. Good stuff. Nice. And like we mentioned, this boss is a huge HP tank, and it does a percentage rather than a set amount of damage. Like, mm. from the highest point in the screen, it does 10% of their health. Mm -hmm. So he's probably doing, like, between 5 and 10% there. I tried really hard to get that extra fall there. It didn't work out, but that's okay. He's now in his third phase where he's going to be a very, very hoppy boy. Which is great for us. Okay. So he does two of those jumps for sure, and then he... Um, can either do a third jump, or he can he can uh, do a big swing. The big swing is why I have Headless the shield on right now, because that actually resets him back to his jumping. He doesn't want to give it to me now, but that's okay. He's almost dead anyway. There it is. All right. Nice fight. And one of the first sponges in the game, like... One of many to come. <laughs> <laughs> also, you might notice that I'm making like micro adjustments whenever I beat a boss. Um, I'm, a, I'm enough of a nerd to know where I have to stand to prevent myself from walking <laughs> to talk to the spirit. So I am standing in very specific spots. So beating him 
We have his spirit, just like everyone else. Uh, I hate it. It's a giant <laughs> hammer that's very slow. I'm going to use it once the whole time. Uh, but most importantly, we got a new ability, and it's called Slam, which I'll show off right now. So he literally just slams the ground. It does do passive damage if you hit an enemy with it, and if you hit a bird, they just immediately fall and die. So, you know, if you don't like birds, I guess it's a good thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so not only is that going to help us advance to some areas that have uh, blighted floors, mm. um, I don't, we saw like one or two. Um, he's what breaks them. But uh, <laughs> you'll also see me use him for movement. Because if you do the slam and then jump or dodge out of it, uh, not only do you cancel that animation, but you also get a tiny bit of height from it. I'm actually going to do one slam cancel in about 15, 20 seconds that ensures that I do an early switch break. But then you're also going to see me do it for a really, really huge amount of blight in uh, like 10 minutes, 15, I don't know. And the sort of water skipping that he's doing is uh, actually re pretty precise to, to keep her skipping along like this. There's actually like an even faster way to do this where you do the dive, but my timing with it is horrible, so... It's really hard. All right, so we got the switch that I was talking about, so I'm going to do a slam. No, I won't. Oh, okay. Just, you know, eat all of the damage. Yeah, yeah that's fine. That's of fine. course. <laughs> First try, second try. Clap. <laughs> all right, so you weren't supposed to go that direction. So I, <laughs> I broke that flower just to get more health. Um, if you have all three of your prayers, which are like the kind of star-shaped things below my health meter, mm. um, that's, that's how many heals you have. Uh, <laughs> if you have all of those, if you break one of those health flowers, it just fills up your health as if you had like a fourth heal. So I just took the little safety there and then, uh, you know, flip the movement a little bit. But uh, this is the next big boss. Her name's Aline. Uh, eventually, she's going to be our main form of combat because she gets to become really busted on this patch. I am on patch 103, <laughs> but... Uh, Okay, that, okay, just, that's <laughs> This fine. boss has a lot of RNG, especially in phases one and two, and setting up drops with her is really important. Um, you're gonna see him jumping kind of high once phase two starts, because you can kind of like manipulate her to be a little higher than she wants to be. She's also kind of like your, the game's like soft tutorial on fall damage, because like you're, you're definitely gonna knock her out of the air a ton, and that's just kind of like the, Dev's way of like showing you, hey, uh, if something falls, they're in trouble. So like right there, she's up pretty high, and we got rid of like wow. a decent chunk. And we're gonna be trying trying to set up um, another stun closer to the end of this phase. Oh, I don't think she's. Uh, uh, yeah, she's phase. probably going. Oh, she went early. Okay, so usually it's sixty six percent, thirty three percent. So she went a little <laughs> early. If if I lined up the stuns just right while she's doing this, she would fall. Mm -hmm. This would cancel this attack, and then she would just also take a lot of damage, like an obscene amount of damage. That's ten percent because she's maximum height at the top of the screen. Also, headless. Uh, headless actually knocks her out of her grab animation there, so we can just abuse that in phase three. She be done in one more attack. She went for a second. I haven't seen that in a while. That's okay. She never does that. She can do that. Nope. You know what? We'll just we'll, we'll do it this way. Bye. Oh, with the quick counter wow. and drop to dispose. That's clapboard. You know, if there's a fight in this run that can go south. This is definitely one of them. All of our other fights so far have gone really well. So you know what? One out of four, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, so not only do we get her ability, which is a projectile, but we can also swim now. So because we have both slam and swim, we're able to get to the next intended area of the game, hmm. which is um, the catacombs. We usually just call it crypt. Sometimes I got to think about what the official name is. <laughs> it has spiders and stuff. If you, if you hate spiders, then... Uh, You'll hate this area. But yeah, uh, this is uh, probably casually for me, this was like one of the most confusing things. So obviously it's a Metroidvania, it's super open. I don't know why I jumped up. Um, it's super open, it expects you to backtrack to make, it, uh, to make progress. Um, the way that the map system is, it was hard for me to tell that I need to go here to hit a switch. And then mm -hmm. this is also the room that I end up in in like a couple of seconds anyway. Mm -hmm. I think the developers added an item there, and in a different room, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's a little easier, like, if you play on the current patches of the game. Yeah, it's. I believe uh, it's currently on patch 1.1.6, but I am on 1.0.3. <laughs> um, for movement reasons, for combat reasons, and uh, 
Yeah, I see. I just knocked out the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That, was, that wasn't on purpose. I'm sorry, Dangers. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm just going to apologize every time. They're going to disown you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I grab um, a relic here, which is just a piece of equipment. It's called the Giant's Ring. Um, in this patch, it gives you a 7.5% boost to all your moves that you perform on the ground. Also, that was a little like movement tech there to cancel my fall animation and reach a ledge that, okay, that uh, you're not supposed to be able to reach yet. Uh, with that right there, like, I threw my hands up in dismay. Um, if you break a box and spam grab, you're able to pick up the item before it fully comes out of the box, but I guess my timing was just a little off there. So these guys explode and exist, I guess. I don't... Uh, that's normal. Don't, don't mind the exploding skeletons. That's, that, that's your warning that you're going into a crypt, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's also a little bit more of a patch exclusive way to move around the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're doing, uh, we're doing heal cancels in the water to, uh, mm. to swim faster. So we just picked up another piece of equipment. It's called Freddy's Ring. Uh, spoiler alert, Freddy is your mom. But uh, So I just put both, both pieces of equipment on. Freddy's Ring is essentially a parry, um, which is incredibly important for this next fight. And uh, something I didn't mention is kind of like Hollow Knight, how there's notches. There's, there's uh, chains of sorcery in this game. Mm. Uh, works exactly the same way. So Giant's Ring is essentially two notches. Freddy's Ring is free. It's, it's, it's almost like they put like a spare ability on a piece of equipment. <laughs> they were like, oh man, we forgot to program the parry. Heck, what are we going to do? <laughs> it's a ring. <laughs> it's a ring now. <laughs> All right, I'm about to do a really huge skip here. We call it spider skip. Um, let's see if I can get the timing. Nice. nice. Wow. Okay. Nicely done. That yeah. skips literally the entire area. We're in the room before the boss now. <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean to spam that. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, so that, that is a huge time save. There's actually two ways to do that trick. Um, there's the way that I did it, which works a little better at uh, higher FPSs. And then there's another way where you get hit by, uh, by the uh, attack. Now I'm going to be really quiet right. here. So the counter basically uh, puts her immediately into stun phase. And as you saw with Headless earlier, stuns make bosses able to be juggled. And we can juggle her infinitely uh, using different alternating patterns between our inventory swaps and our, our sword and our floral. And as long as she doesn't touch the ground at this point, we're great. They actually made her heavier in newer patches of the game, so we have to have like a different strategy for juggling her, but it is still possible. <laughs> a tricky thing too here is that if Keys ends up swinging a little bit too early, then the attack just won't happen after they juggle the boss up, and that would cause the boss to fall to the ground. All right, great job. Nice. All right. Another reason that we have Headless, she's going to do attacks that we can get fall damage off of. Mm. It's, it's very nice. Headless is actually really good for this category. So she took fall damage there, and it cancels the animation, and I also can stand in her attack. <laughs> I feel kind of bad for her. Um, if she looks familiar, it's because uh, she is actually uh, Sigrid's sister. Um, you can kind of mm. tell that with the music, too. It's very uh, similar themes. And there's actually a timing to that parry right there too. Um, if you do it, uh, if you do it too early, then it doesn't work, and then you just sit in the laser and die. She is almost dead. Please don't jump to the left. Nice. Excellent. Wow. Way and to go. the position is great. All right. So. With every spirit, I don't think I have to explain every time that when I beat them, I get one of their powers. But uh, what she gives us as an ability is called Guardian's Wings, which is just a dash. They have another <laughs> ability called Dash, so I guess they just, just like their way to like <laughs> separate the meanings. But we also get last rights. So here's one reason why we're on patch 103. I can cancel the dash animation by swapping my spirits, oh, and yes. it saves quite a bit of time. <laughs> and then um, also to explain last rites, uh, we're going to refer to them as ultimates for the rest of the run because they're just mm. molts. Uh, any red spirit, so any main spirit, once you build up that meter in the bottom left, which mm -hmm. is now active, uh, you get a really powerful attack. <laughs> um, we might see one here. We'll see. We'll see. Depends on if we get the thing. This is the boss we were talking about earlier. OK. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> 
There we go. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, minor enemy don't have any sort of like damage cap on, you know, damage when, when they fall from a certain uh, height. So that's 80% of their health obliterated <laughs> right there. You actually get that's like ridiculous. a full kill on him too. <laughs> Did you know that my character has sisters? They're not alive anymore, but there's one of them. Oh yeah, that's that's one of the lilies. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I'm about to do another patch exclusive trick. Um, it's not necessarily because of the patch itself, it's just the geometry of the area that I'm about to go to uh, is changed in the immediate next patch. So I'm gonna be quiet real quick. So basically, oh, the, yeah. the spirits that you get can be also be used for movement. So it's not necessarily just movement that gives you access to certain areas of the game. In fact, there are certain parts of the run in like 100%, for example, where you actually have to use spirits to get to certain items and things. Okay, there we go. Wow, nicely done. And then one more set of that, which you can actually see this one. And there we go. So we go. Yeah, let's go. So this is 800 Furious Blight. We're not going to use it right away, but we're going to use it after this next fight. We're going to upgrade some of our main spirits, and we're going to be really, really strong. But I, I would say beefy, but man, we take two hits, and we're still dead anyways. <laughs> also, if you're not a spider enjoyer, you might want to look at this part. You might enjoy this. Any spider haters in chat? Any spider haters in chat? <laughs> Are there any bird spiders? No. no. Would be that would be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we're actually going to see an ultimate ability used to essentially juggle her into the air. Nice. Okay, so we're, we're, we're weenie right now, but we're going to be super duper muscly. We, we hit the gym. I asked, I asked Dwayne The Rock Johnson for his uh, exercise regimen. I, I couldn't do it. That's why we use spirits instead. <laughs> Her arms are smaller than mine. Yeah, the spirits are already went to the gym yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, so they saved me the trouble. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put on some new spirits here. Um, put you here. Can you imagine like a gym battery? Like you just plug in a battery into someone, suddenly they're just swole. <laughs> <laughs> it's another SpongeBob reference, but anchor arms, baby! Yeah. Now I'm a jerk, and everyone yeah. loves me. <laughs> I drank my muscle milk. <laughs> well, she is an anime protagonist. So. It is true. It is true. <laughs> but you can, you can, like, we've been through this area before, and you can just see just how much faster I am, especially with this movement technique. Yeah. Um, no, no more dolphin. One of no the things I really, really love about this this game as a speed game is there are so many different routes. Like, if you watch hmm. 100%, you actually do a crazy skip to get up here way earlier in the run so that you can get the ability we're going towards now. <laughs> Yeah, and if you do this on current patch, you actually do this boss like second or third to last. So like, just because I'm on a different patch um, and the availability of what I have. Mm. It's, it's neat. I don't, not, not a singular route between patches is the same, except for the fastest uh, category, which is just any percent A ending, which A ending, there's, there's, there's three endings to this. There's a ending A, there's ending B, and there's ending C, which is essentially true ending. Um, the end point for this is ending B. Ending A is just a suggestion. <laughs> it's a fever dream. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually, they literally just turn you around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I kind of messed up my movement a little bit there. As you saw, I took like 75% damage from these. Uh, their hitboxes are kind of deceptive. <clears throat> But uh, as long as we don't die, because this would be a really slow death, and this is the last one to pass, so we are, we are out of the water, literally. Literally. <laughs> okay, well, I lied. We are out of the water, literally, for real this time. <laughs> it was Chatelet. It was Chatelet. <laughs> yeah, Chatelet. I was, I was waiting for Chatelet, exactly. Uh, we don't normally need to take that bench, but because I had the heal, I want all my heals back, because this is an area that... Oh, gosh. You, you, can, you can die in some of the lamest ways. All right, are y'all ready to see what Aline is capable of as an ultimate ability? Yeah. Woo! All right. Bye. Oh! <laughs> you saw maybe about half of that half of that uh, attack miss, but it still did a lot of damage. <laughs> so this is the biggest reason I'm on a 100 patch. 
because uh, once we get to the 111 patches, Aline starts shooting in a Christmas tree pattern, and it like it's a perfect wrap around this boss. <laughs> And, and that's just like a good example of like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to use Aline. She's no longer broken. I mean, she's still good for one boss in the later yeah. patches, but we had to get a little more creative. All right, so I, I filled up my ult there, um, not because I necessarily needed to, but there's a really obnoxious room we're about to approach called Elevator. Um, in older <laughs> patches, uh, these teleporting axe guys, um, they can. Uh, they can ride the elevator up with you like that. There so. he is. He just wanted to showcase for the. He did. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> At least it didn't end badly because they can knock you off and it's just a nightmare because then you have to call the elevator back and he's just like, hi, I'm still here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's me, your friendly neighborhood teleporting X man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ride elevators with you. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I need an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a safety heal here. Okay, so. Oh, wow, nice. Another chain of sorcery. Chain of sorceries are how you increase those notches. We have two right now for a grand total of four, because you start with two by default. We will get five total. Because we will equip a couple of more things, and those things are really strong. At least one of them is. One of them keeps you alive. <laughs> And here's a fun boss coming up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you talk about this one. Yeah, uh, so this is Hanir coming up. He summons approximately 200 billion ads, sometimes 300 billion ads. Give or take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of varies. Okay. Um, oh, great, excellent. So uh, whenever you use a lean, if you're like in a certain position in relation to the boss, you get something called tracking, which you can see all of her orbs going towards him. That doesn't normally happen. It's supposed to spread out evenly. So he tries to get tracking as early as he can in the fight. And the earlier you get it, obviously, the more damage you can get. Like, look at that. He just ate all of that beautiful wow. Aline orb. <laughs> oh, no. I got Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> And since they can kind of teleport on you, it's a good idea to try to stay at full health, especially for, you know, a marathon. Well, I could tell that he jumped again because that curved very weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so much hoppier than normal. You can also try to do fall damage on him, which is, uh, which is a strat that you do for uh, any percent. Yeah, so the any percent A ending run um, basically only does this in a handful of other bosses because the A ending is actually right past Hanier. Hmm. So they fight this boss with like nothing. It's an amazing run to see. Just waiting for him to get to me. Ah, oh, I was a little slow on that. That would have been so good if that worked You still out. got a couple of hits on that. Huge. Awesome. Wow. wow. Very good. Amazing fight. So the getting the Aline tracking at the beginning of the fight is something I discovered literally two days ago. <laughs> on accident. I forgot nice. what boss I was fighting. And I was like, oh, this is where I do it, right? <laughs> so getting that tracking early is very nice, especially since he is the most mobile boss. All right, so now we have Executioner's Hook. We're just calling it Hook. Just save the trouble, but it's really good vertical movement. It's also going to help me with a ridiculous glitch I'm going to do. This is the only major glitch of the game. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not coming up just now, but you can also see what, how hook works. If you have never seen a hook shot before, I would be shocked. No, there's no hooks to grapple with in Metroidvania. What? 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 That doesn't no. sound right. Take it, hook us. <laughs> Take it from us, the couch of Metroidvania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't forget about me, I'm teleporting Axeman. <laughs> Get back on the elevator, Axeman. <laughs> you might notice when I swim that some of my movement looks a little jank. Um, 103 has really weird geometry underwater, so sometimes you can get caught on absolutely nothing, so I just kind of try to avoid that. Also, sorry again to burden. Here's a bunch of them just for like, oh boy, a lily, and then just 
ate the water. <laughs> is that like a bird frog? Like what? He's supposed to be a gargoyle. Oh. <laughs> so kind of. Violin was a little off there, but that's okay. This boss is basically the only reason that he's equipping Spider for this, because Spider freezes them in place, and he likes to keep the, uh, dashing. Mm -hmm. So he, he isn't as mobile as Hainir, for example, but um, <laughs> he can fly. And we all know how we feel yeah. about flyers yeah, here. birds! Uh. Imagine flying <laughs> axemen that can teleport. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm giving them ideas for their next I'm game. I'm an axeman with wings! <laughs> If they make an Ender Lilies 2 and there's an Axe Man with wings, then... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will be so upset at you. <laughs> oh, it's funny you ask, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Would a so bird frog where... be a gird or a brog? I like brog. I like brog. Yeah, I'm glad we agree. Okay, so I'm upgrading some of my spirits. Uh, I got Sigrid to four. I got... Uh, floral to four, and I got Archer to five because Archer on this patch is also really good. He has a very tight spread, so um, mm. like, and he starts behind you, so I'm gonna try to show that off real quick. There we go. So like, Ooh. I was past him, but Archer spawns behind you, so like, it just makes for a really good way to build your uh, ultimate points. Also, stun meter. Floral and Archer are like the best spirits in the game. There is some risky movement I could have done there to save a tiny bit of time, but it's not really worth it. He also equipped Garrod, which he hasn't used yet so far, but Garrod actually can be used to skip a lot of different sections in this game. And speaking of skips, the big hook skip is coming up. Did you want to explain that? Or Yeah, so uh, first right there what I did was I reset my hook momentum over and over. I'm going to take out a couple of enemies real quick, and then I'm going to show off the major glitch in the game. If he, hey, 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 come that's, down that's here. <laughs> okay, so. So essentially he's getting hook storage there. And the way the grapple works is the farther away you get from the center point, the farther <laughs> it launches you. <laughs> and it's, it's like half the castle. <laughs> yeah, that literally saves us two minutes in movement. That's and, incredible. And that setup that I did is actually one that I just came up with a couple of weeks ago. It's really consistent. Now here's where we use Garrett. Yeah, his, his only <laughs> use for his ultimate ability, because his ultimate ability is awful. <laughs> it does, like, no damage. It doesn't even do stun. I don't I don't know what he's... He's just yelling, I guess. And I he's just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I have so many emotions! <laughs> <laughs> we're going to use him one more time. He's also going to help us with his normal attacks for this big elevator we're coming to. Um, and I'm going to try to do this elevator a little risky because I can afford to, and if I can get it right, then you'll, you'll see how slow this elevator moves, and you'll just, you can kind of assume how much time I save if I do this right. Yeah, you're intended to just wait for the elevator to go up, but using our, our Silva movement, uh, we can actually just totally skip all of it. I'm not gonna go for it now, I'm hurt. There we go. Excellent. Wow, nicely clock. done. That was great. Have we talked about levels at all? Nope. Levels don't matter. <laughs> we got a lot of levels in that elevator. They do increase your damage, but it's such a small amount that it actually doesn't even end up mattering. Do another switch break that's off screen there. Um, both Floral and Sigrid can reach that. So we're skipping 80% of this room. And now we're about to fight probably one of my favorite bosses. This, this is the boss where like it just kind of clicked, like the combat kind of clicked in my head. <laughs> His name is Olv. If you want a tragic backstory, he's waiting in his field of flowers for your mom, because he loves your mom. It's Aww. sad. So we're going to kill him. <laughs> he also likes birds. Yeah. <laughs> How could he? <laughs> uh, usual fanfare. I'm going to be leaning on top of him. We did get tracking, which isn't significant against him, but it's still nice in case he decides to be super hoppy. Because he, he is a jumper. We got fall damage, too. That's very rare. Nice. There. One, one Garrett for the people. <laughs> 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 now, 
Now, what's weird about this is this is his ultimate ability, and it's not actually what you get when you beat him. <laughs> he just kind of has his own, like, fight-exclusive ability. Wait, what is his normal ult? Because I know his his ult is like the X whenever you're in the air. I don't even remember what his base ult is. Uh, it's a small shockwave. Embarrassingly oh, yeah. small. Does, okay. like, hardly... Yeah, 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 I remember. Oh, well, I, I beat him. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So he actually has like a smaller health pool. Him and Hanier actually have small health pools. Uh, but he's, as you can see, he's probably like one of the most aggressive bosses when it comes to actually like combating you. Um, this is a little bit of a time loss, but uh, I'm picking up another Priestess Wish. I don't think, did we explain what Priestess Wishes do? I don't think we no. did. Uh, okay. Priestess Wishes essentially increase the amount that you can heal. Um, and there's some stuff toward the end of the run that's actually very, very scary. So we're trying to get up to like 160 total health. We start at 100 and uh, enough heals that one heal after getting hit should help us get most of the way back. All right, so that was our last chain of sorcery we're picking up. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of a detour here. It's about 20 seconds of a detour. Um, this is not a safety strap. This is actually necessary. So I just got the Rickerous Ring which once I equip it, you'll see I'll have two meters instead of one for my ultimate, which, <laughs> as you can imagine, is going to be very, very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. One Aline? How about two Aline? Exactly. God, Aline's so good in this patch. <laughs> I miss you, Aline. You, uh, you use Silva's ult in current patches, which is a very cool ult, don't get me wrong. I think visually it's, it's a lot more stunning than Aline, but it just isn't the same. When we were first routing, we really thought Silva would be a lot better. And then we saw Aline and we were just like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. All right, I was just building up some of my ult there. Good right, wow. I, I hope you all like seeing that kind of fight, because that is essentially most <laughs> of the rest of the fights. <laughs> Classic Metroidvania speedrun tech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're gonna go to uh, Julius's castle, who has, I think, the coolest backstory in the game. I, you love his backstory. I so. love Julius. <clears throat> oh, also, you know, I'm doing a little bit of movement right now. Uh, hey, Mello, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Do you uh, want me to read a huge donation? Absolutely. How about this, $1,337. Wow. That's from Sean D04. Thank you so much. They say the leak donation for the leak gamer. That is Kizaron. <laughs> this game is so beautiful and the music is incredible. But since I have to make a joke, this is a weird looking Pokemon game. <laughs> but uh, I guess hey, look, you're still catching them all, so it must be one. Got to put the donation towards the bonus game because we can't leave any run behind. Love GDQ so much and I'm always so happy I can donate. Thank you, Sean D. Right, it, was Thank you, Sean. it was very important to me that you read a donation there too, Mello, because I had to take out a dog. And, oh. Yeah. You, you distracted us from it. Well, yeah, I have boo, <laughs> boo keys. <laughs> from Picalax Alt, they donate $25 and say, how does he do it? <laughs> that would have been better for the dog. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we had to unfortunately take out a dog. I know it sucks, but uh, the, the neat thing if you want to, you know, call the dog a good boy one more time, uh, the neat thing is it doesn't attack you. It's just like, okay, please, please remove the blight. I refuse to attack you. I love you, Lily. Also, for what it's worth, this is all spirit, so we obviously had to kill the dog, but a lot of categories can actually jump over the dog. <laughs> so... All right, so what I did was uh, another skip um, by utilizing... Silva to keep my momentum up. I was able to kind of just do a U shape there, mm. and uh, that allows me to skip a lot of this castle. Basically, if it's a castle, I'm skipping about 80% of it. I'm just starting to realize. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed some health there. Uh, that's kind of a safety thing. We don't typically go for the 160 health that Emre mentioned earlier, but for the sake of not dying to one of the strongest enemies in the game, uh, and for marathon safety, we are definitely going to go for it. Yeah, it would be one thing if it was just an enemy, but uh, yeah, the final boss can actually spawn that enemy, so... All right, this is our last Priestess Wish we're picking up. Most of our resources are pretty much done from here. Now we have a boss here. Hopefully I can time this right. Aw, he turned around Aww. just in time. 
Yeah, so one of the gimmicks of this area is that a lot of the enemies have shields. So you want to wait until you're either inside of them, behind oh, them. No. Oh, oh, no. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I did not shuffle my spears. Oh, wait. It was... I got a frame perfect kill. He wait, killed what? me and I killed him. <laughs> Double <laughs> kill! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> oh, That's wow. never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you when you defeat enemies, you get experience, and you, you don't get experience if you die unless they died with you. So I won. I was robbed. We have to fight him again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If, there, if there's a fight to die in, that was a fun way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you were saying yeah, about so the, shields. Like, you want to either like be inside of them or behind them or wait for them to swing so that their shield is dropped. So it's just a matter of a lot of timing. There, oh, I'm the winner. We, <laughs> we were talking a little bit about geometry in the in patch 1.03, but. Um, if you see him get hit there, like it's not really like that that big of a mistake because like mm. their hit boxes will actually like appear a little bit earlier than the animation of their yep. swing. <laughs> so it's it's a lot deceptive, especially for these uh, later fights that you're going to be seeing coming up. Yeah, there's a there's a big blob enemy in uh, the like kind of final biome of the game that. Oh goodness. The final biome is scary. <laughs> it is. It is a very scary thing. So that boss that we beat, his name is uh, One-Eyed Aegis. And his weapon is actually really good. It's another sword. We finally get a sword back. Uh, he does very equivalent stun damage to uh, to Floral, but also mm. does like actual significant damage. And this fight is a tough one, but a fun one. This is a very important fight to get tracking on. And on the first stun, he's going to go for it. Yulius' hitbox appears a little bit uh, lower than he actually is. Or is it higher? Lower? Higher. Higher. No, lower. You're right, you're right. Yeah, lower. So, like, you can't really stand inside of him and ult. You have to be in a really weird position in relation to him. It took us a long time in the community to figure out exactly what was happening. Ah, uh, I was oh, way no. far off. That's fine. It's all right. We have until the end of phase two before it gets scary that we don't have ult. I mean, tracking. Yeah, it's easier Sorry. to get this on phase one just because uh, he's a little bit less aggressive. Oops. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. This is my favorite theme in the game. It's so good. It's so good. There was actually an anime composer that was the, the musician for this game. Okay, there it there is. There it is. Good stuff. Took a while, but... Yeah, he's such a cheater, because like, even though he doesn't have a shield, he has the shielding. Yeah, he has the shield for phase one and two. Uh, okay, well, you know, yeah. that was on accident, but it was on purpose. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Calculated. Oh, oh no. Oh. Okay, so my my dash cooldown, I guess? I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened there. That, that, was, that was execution error. If you're going to die, it's in this fight. Yeah. This is, like, the hardest fight. <clears throat> It's fine. The, the music's so good, I wanted to play it again. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Let's see if we can get the tracking on the uh, phase one for this uh, preliminary stun. Okay, Got it. Cool. Nice. Much better this time. No one saw the first part. This first try. <laughs> yeah, <first> try. <laughs> yeah, once we get to the third phase, this fight's a lot more enjoyable as the player because I don't have to keep doing this, like, song and dance with him. I'm surprised you're not in your second phase yet. There you there are. There he goes. No, it didn't oh. take... Oh, no. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. You're just extending the music for me. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate exactly. it. This is what this is what the estimates for. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> okay. Third time's the charm. Okay, I'll hit his left. <laughs> and I'll mess that up. See, third time's the charm. Okay. 
Keys is one of the best runners of this game. Like, this fight is just genuinely unbelievably hard. <laughs> Usually a little more consistent when it comes to getting the tracking, but that, that's okay. Yeah, he is the hardest boss to get tracking on, especially since you have to be in that weird, slightly behind him, a little in the air position. There it is. There, there we it go. Goes. All right, this is the one. Yes. I believe in you. I don't. Cheer if you believe in keys. <laughs> Woo! There we go. There we go. We got the tracking on him. Now the music's getting good, so... Not that it wasn't good already, but... It's got that big piano build-up. The short story of Julius, since we have a little time, is uh, he's actually the... Uh, one, like, the secret son of the king, so he rose up through the ranks and became a knight just so he could overthrow his father, and that's why you can find the decayed crown on the side of the castle. He literally threw him off of the castle and took the throne. We're fighting him in the throne room right now. He's such a cool character. One last. All right, so that's pretty much GG. Um, nice. One thing that I really did want to note about that big beam is that, again, falling in line with 1.03 and deceptive hitboxes, you cannot be on either on, on that side. Even if you're like in the air, it's more pretty much like an infinite vertical hitbox that will scuff you. <laughs> it is bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have dash, like actual dash. So uh, Julius is basically our mount now, and uh, also much like how Garrett's slam is able to get you through floors, Julius's lance is now able to pierce through walls. So there's, there's areas we can access now that we couldn't before. Right now it's kind of like a mini boss rush. Um, nothing too notable. So this is actually a really good spot for donations. Absolutely. We have a $50 donation from your best friend. They say, this run has been a joy to watch from the stream room. This couch is an all-timer. This host is a legend. This GDQ is completely phenomenal. And so, a haiku. A Kizaron run, not Animorphs, but still cool. Ender Lily's rules. <laughs> I agree. This yeah, that's true. a great one. And just look at that damage of wow. the ult. We were in uh, a little bit earlier. We we actually had a extra bar for ultimates, and this is pretty much exactly why we use it uh, for the boss rush. It's just such immense damage. If you manage to get tracking, it's even it's even better. Can we get another quick donation? Absolutely. From Kirby Masta, oh, you have a $10 no, donation. Yeah. <laughs> See, please remember to pet their cat. Of also, course. donation goes to Boxy's Choice. I, I mean, Runner's Choice. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Boxy. We miss you. Boxy's our cat. I we heard that she snuggled with her babysitter yesterday. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Hey, Mello. Yeah. Can we get a tally on the current uh, bonus game incentive? Oh, Ooh. yes. We are at $24,520 out of $60,000 for Castlevania Symphony of the Night Randomizer. So we're not even halfway there. Nope. I think we here's, can do it, though. Here's the thing. And here's I'm going to sell you on this real quick. It is a brand new uh, preset for the Symphony of the Night Randomizer. If you love dogs, I don't think Keith does, but if you love what? dogs, <laughs> what? No. you definitely want to donate towards this run. Dragon Blitz is an all-timer. Symphony of the Night is a GDQ staple, so let us hear it one more time to get those donations in for Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Come on, Twitch chat. Let's go. Keith hates dogs, birds, frogs. Like, what? What's happening? <laughs> Oh yeah, this is a, a, a cacophony of uh, forest creatures and <laughs> blighted fellows. This, that, just, uh... this is just animal block. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god, the birds have reinforcements now. <laughs> okay. That fog does a lot of damage, which is why I'm playing this safe. But otherwise, good fight. Nice. Yeah, normally you'd pick up a, a, like a piece, right? Like a little... Uh... What, what would you call them in this oh, game? Oh, that's a different kind of fog. But yeah, oh. uh, it's called, uh, we just call it mask. I don't even remember what it's actually called. It, it, mm. Heretic's mask? Heretic's I think is the mask? Name of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So the final area of the game, which we're, we're going to be coming up on in a second, mm -hmm. um, has a bunch of fog that chips away at your health. So actually, it's fun, it's a fun fact that uh, this game is possible to beat hitless, but not damageless if you're into like huh. hitless runs and stuff. <laughs> because uh, it's like one tick per uh, per tick if you're wearing the mask, and it's compared to like 10 damage per tick if you're not wearing the mask. And some categories actually don't get the mask. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot of bugs. So this is the boss that we could have fought way earlier, but as you see, like, why, why do it early when I can end it in like three seconds? <laughs> he, didn't even, he didn't even get up all the way. His animation wasn't done. I was, no, he, he was like, all right, man. I was so close. Right, I'm about to head out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got one more boss in this boss rush before I go to the final area, which will have three total bosses. This boss, when I first started playing the game, uh, very difficult because there's just a lot of enemies and it's, it's like the boss version of like the teleporting axe guy. But uh, <laughs> to come to find out, uh, his hitbox is very, very tall. Deceptively tall. I'm going to heal to be safe, though. Yeah, these enemies don't despawn. So they're a little scary. He's not scary, but the enemies are. <laughs> oh, my God. Fatality. <laughs> Yeah, so there was a boss in that room. Yeah. <laughs> his name is Dark Executioner. Was. Was. Dark Executioner. <laughs> As a spirit, he's actually pretty good. He's got an axe that hits enemies from behind. And his, his spirit building for your ult is really, really good. Uh, I would use him in a different category, but not this one. Just, just because like our resources are so tight. Mm. Now we're going to go through an area that I hope I do well, because the movement looks really cool when I do it well. So I don't know if we talked about it, but there's like basically two layers of like the, the pierce and the, the ground pound abilities. So you'll see right here, he flashes red and then he flashes like darker red. And you need that to break these really thick walls. So the movement that he's going to try to do here just looks really cool. Okay. If he can get it. Oh, okay. You could just grab the I wall. I you could do that. <laughs> Today I learned. Surprise. <laughs> I'm teleporting Axe Guy. I ruined your physics. <laughs> Hey there, Keys! I noticed that you were climbing on a wall there! <laughs> that's not an elevator! That's just a wall, Keys! That's supposed to climb on that! <laughs> that's me, teleporting x guy. I love how he's just like, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Disney got weird. <laughs> Hi, Keys! Have you met my friend, teleporting x guy? <laughs> 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 All right, so we're in, <laughs> we're in an area called Verboten Domain. Uh, this is the area that, as you can see, the water is red, and uh, there's going to be fog in certain places. I just picked up the mask, so I'm only taking one damage on that waterfall, two damage in water in general, and then one damage when I'm in the fog. The mask cuts out 90% of the damage, so otherwise we'd be taking 10 and 20. And when I have, you know, less than 200 health, that's kind of not great. Um, so the big gimmick here is there's a central elevator and we have to go to separate sides of this entire biome to pull switches and get those elevators active. There's also one really obnoxious underwater boss that I'm hoping I don't die to too much. Mm. I expect to die at least once. Um, it has been rectified with newer patches, but on this older patch, the, uh, the color saturation isn't that great and I mm. have color deficiency. So hmm. I only know the boss is there if I hit him and see his, uh, his HP bar show up. Yeah, shout outs to the devs for improving that in later patches. Because uh, Key's one of the first people to point it out, like, hey, I actually can't really see anything in all of the red. <laughs> so they made it to where the boss is more gray now. Hmm. Yeah, so this is, a, this is a safety bench that we're going to unlock just in case I die. Yeah, remember, you, you you just need to enter the room. It's kind of like Symphony of the Night where you just kind of have to enter the room in order to activate it. Mm. But uh, if you want to, you know, death warp back to it for any sort of reason, you have to sit on that bench and rest. Mm -hmm. So those are the, the scary, slappy enemies we were talking about. They fling their tentacles, and the tentacles' hitboxes uh, do not line up at all with where they actually are. Huh. Um, I've seen him die, uh, at, like, during the wind-up of that before. <laughs> <laughs> like so, it's really scary. You have to be careful about where you dash there to avoid it. Yeah, the hitbox can actually like go through like the solid walls of that too. So you gotta be yeah. really, really careful. <laughs> All right. um, I hope I went to the right place. This is a backup health that I was 
considering picking up. Uh, now I won't die in one shot to the thing I was saying I was going to die in one shot to. So it should be right here. There it is. Okay, good. Nice. So yeah, now we have... I think we actually have 165 health. There's one enemy that can do 159 damage to me, so I just want to make sure I can at least survive it. Mm. You saw the little baby fish. fish. They have uh, large fish <laughs> that are way scarier. Mm -hmm. oh. Do the fish count as birds since they <laughs> They float. So I'm, I'm counting it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard of things called flying fish, right? Like, that's just nightmare fuel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the fish! They're god, getting what? up! They're getting out of the water! And they're flying! <laughs> no! Alright, we're about to fight the boss that we were just talking about. I do have ult built up. Hopefully, this goes okay. I'm gonna try to take it as safe as I possibly can. I only have one heal left. There it is. If you can't see the boss, we get it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. One of the things that Keys does is, so Aline's normal attack can target the enemy, so you can kind of see where he is based on that. And also, like, Keys tries to hit him as soon as he can so that he can just see the health bar. Yeah. Oh, my. As soon as the boss dies, it'll stop no. chipping our health. Oh, so okay. close. Very close. Very One close. HP in a dream, but the wrong side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But after oh wrong way after uh, after this boss we have a main boss a spirit and then the final boss and the final boss is actually really cool to watch um, the the last remaining main boss is the only boss in the current patch that uh, you still use a lean for and then uh, the boss uh, the sub boss before that is just one of these guys except like fancier he's the champion he's the verboten champion. I guess he cashed in his money in the bank or something. I don't know. Because he's the best around. around. <laughs> Nothing's ever gonna keep him there. Because <laughs> he's got an axe. It can teleport. <laughs> <laughs> he, it's, a, it's a claw. There's like three axes on his hand. <laughs> Okay, I know there's people that love doing fan art for GDQ. If I don't see at least one teleporting axe guy in fan art, then are, are you really making art? <laughs> okay, we're going to approach this fight with a lot more heals. So that's, that's really good. We'll have two because I'm going to heal on the way. Nice. You're a lot better off this time. Yeah. Also, some of your spirits don't work underwater. So if you were wondering oh. if I wasn't using some of the spirits. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see how Archer's grayed out? Mm. Oh, interesting. Much better. Wow, oh, nice fight. It's a way better fight this time around. Yeah, so, some, some of how the fight went last time was mainly because positioning. Like I said, right. I know he's there now. I, I couldn't see him when I first started, but that's okay. That's tough too, because you like you don't know how to react to yeah, like the attack yeah. patterns and stuff like that. It's, it's almost like a, every time I do that fight on this patch, it's almost like improv for me. Yeah, like e even the wind up for their attacks, like down underwater, just like really hard to see, especially since you're gonna be like throwing all these spirits at them to right, begin yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> like. All right, so we're going through this one more time. Uh, we have all these switches pulled. Uh, this is actually just kind of like a nice central hub. There's actually like other locations that you could have benches here. <laughs> um, this is actually technically the second location, mm. but it just it works out that with all spirits because of how you have to fight everything, this just ends up being the fastest way to do everything. Sure. That was rude. Yeah, that <laughs> that sure was some uh, movement from that fish. Yeah, I was like, they they scheming. <laughs> <laughs> they really want to get like a cheap kill here. <laughs> For the content. The thing I like about this run overall is that, like, what you will learn for, like, preliminary movement, whether it be, like, dashing or just, like, canceling the animations of uh, your ledge grab, yeah. you will see it prevalent throughout the entire run. Like, right. like you won't, you, right. besides the dashes, you won't really see 
something replace the other outright. It's just straight fundamental. So if you're trying to get into this game, honestly, practice uh, a lot of the controller configurations. Because, like right. again, like a Metroidvania, right. you're able to get your controls all right. And then, uh, yeah, just feel free to ask for help in, the, in our discords. And mm -hmm. this is a sick run. We're trying to get more people on this. <laughs> Yeah, this yeah. game deserves so much attention. It came out when Metroid Dread got announced. So, you know, good, good, good luck at that point, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to see this being shown at GDQ because this community has been working on this game for full years now. And it's such a cool run. Oh. Oh, she ate rude. you. Yeah, she did. That was rude. rude. So this is the boss that's actually still faster with a lean on even whenever she's patched on current patches. Huh. Uh, because you can just be in her because she's so huge. <laughs> is it possible to skip this final phase in this category? Yes. Yeah. Very hard, though. Yeah. And she's down. Nice. What a loser. So even though we're like towards the end here, um, you still get another ability, you know, true to Metroidvania fashion. So uh, this is Faden. He's actually like the real boss. That's his wife that he was trying to save. So just another you know tragic thing. He gives you the ability to turn a handle and unlock doors. <laughs> so a key? Yeah, pretty much. And <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see exactly how he opens doors. It's really silly. It's oh, no, key, I can't open magic. this door. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, goodbye. <laughs> all right, this, this area is called the Abyss. This place sucks. This is why we got all the extra health. I would no normally not do it in, like, real run attempts, but if we get hit by these once, I'd like to at least not die, because it's very slow to die in this area. Yeah, and as you can see, they shoot very fast. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> He almost sniped. And the thing is, even if we're done with this oh. platforming, you're not going to be seeing the end of these big fish enemies. All right, so t contact damage is less than their projectile, so hitting him there was fine. Uh, and since I just got a heal in there, too, we should still be able to survive one projectile. One. At this point, it's usually pretty safe. That first half Ooh. of this is scary. Oh, that's something that like we haven't really seen too often. Yeah. Is uh, okay. Prove when, me wrong. When I did that, uh, when I did that dash against the wall, the geometry actually pushes you and gives you a little extra momentum. Mm. Interesting. All right, so we have one more sub spirit, and then we have the final boss. So we're we're really close. Hey, speaking of really close, I wonder if we're any really ah. closer to a uh, bonus game, Mello. You got any couple donations to read on up? Yeah, I have donations. Let's see. How about from Moss? They donate $25 and say, Ender Lilies is such a good game. Thank you. The soundtrack is beautiful, and in that spirit, my dono is going to the Step Maniacs incentive. Let's go for good tunes. Thank you for that. And another one here we have, ah, from the D20 Challenge, BioFreak donates $250. Ooh, wow. And they say, D20 Challenge, here's my result on a D20 times five donated. Uh, I rolled wow. a 50 on my D20, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Time for one more? Go ahead. From Baitwiz, we have a $25 donation. They say, hey, Keys, so excited to see you absolutely crush this run. You're such a wonderful individual, and I'm so glad that I've gotten to know you. Aww. Aww. Clap if you love keys. And also shout out the banquet for the donation. Yeah. Uh -huh. I right. also love keys. Me. Uh -huh. I'm a 48s guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are approaching the final boss. <laughs> Hopefully I can get this in one try. I, I did have like a death budget and I, I died a little more than I wanted to, but we should still be on really good pace. She's another huge oh. boss. One of the best looking final bosses I've seen. In yeah. Yeah, this fight's actually fantastic. We're not going to get to see a certain phase of it um, because that's actually getting, that would give you ending C. But the ending C is amazing. You have to play this game yourself and see it yourself. She can spawn the big fish. So this is where like the fight really gets scary. Oh, and the fish are flying. <laughs> yep. Fish are the worst. <laughs> All right, we apologize to birds. Uh, fish <laughs> is now our new worst enemy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if you're a fish enjoyer. 
We're just insulting all the animals. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> and time will be as soon as the save shows up at the bottom. And time. Excellent. Oh, Final well boss done. fight. Good dash dancing to, to escape the big fish's wrath. And again, I'm going to be saying this. Well, I mean, we're, we're here for a couple more minutes. But play Ender Lilies. Yeah, do it. It's such a fantastic game. It goes on sale on Steam a lot. I think it's like normally like 30 bucks. You can sometimes get it for like 15 or 20. It's worth the 30 alone. Like fantastic soundtrack, huge game, um, fantastic combat, cool mechanics, just Wonderful. Wonderful all around. And again, I said this at the beginning, but uh, I'm also going to try not to cry about this. I'm just super happy that I was able to show this off. Uh, this game's super meaningful to me because, like I said, it was our first date, and she got a key for me, and now I'm able to show it off. You were able to be here with me. I love you very much. Thank Aww. you. Thank you. This is actually our two-year anniversary yeah, this week. Yeah, our two-year anniversary is in a few days, so mm -hmm. really exciting. But, Can uh, we get a preliminary happy two-year anniversary to Keys and Emre? <laughs> All right. We're not going to keep you much longer. We have far too many awesome runs, everyone. So thanks for, thanks for dealing with uh, Teleporting Axe Man for <laughs> about an hour. And we'll all see you throughout the week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Wonderful, just wonderful. Give it up, everyone, for Emre, the Black Tastic, Covert Muffin, and of course, Kizaron. <laughs> Y'all are great. Hey, I want to give a shout out real quick. We're going to talk about the GDQ Hot Fix. Guess what's happening in June? Juneteenth, our annual event celebrating black independence is coming up on June 17th and 18th. Join us as we highlight the amazing talents of the black speedrunning community. Check out the schedule by typing exclamation point Juneteenth in chat. Alien Hominid Invasion, the new title from the Behemoth, is coming this year! The mayhem never ends with infinite replayability as you grow stronger. Wiser? After each city block in this arcade-style co-op, run-and-gun reimagination of Alien Hominid, get the intel at www.beh.gg forward slash aliens. All right, everyone, that does it for me today as your host. Once again, I've been Brutal Mellow, and I'll be back on Friday. I love you very much, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. But we have ADEF and Ben Stevens 56 in the building. So without further ado, take it away, my dear friends.